Hey guys, so today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite topics in music. Um, it's a pretty advanced topic, so you know if uh, if you're having trouble following along, then you know I'm going to recommend some videos to check out and some concepts to get familiar with uh, first, um, so that you can come back to this uh, afterwards. Um, anyway, that topic today is uh, reharmonization. <laughs> So like a month or two ago, I, I don't remember exactly how long, I put up a status on Facebook that said, you know, if you want to get some practice writing uh, emotionally expressive chord progressions and melodies, take a song that has a very intense emotion that you like and reharmonize it and then write a new melody to your reharmonization, all the while trying to keep the original spirit of the song alive. Um, and a couple of people you know, asked me for some examples of that, um, and they asked me what I meant, and I, ha I pointed to um, the song from my solo album, Fishar, uh, as an example, um, because I basically took Creep by Radiohead, which in my opinion is the saddest song ever written, um, and reharmonized it to the chords for Fishar, um, and then wrote a melody. So, I thought today uh, we could talk about um, you know, some of the methods for reharmonization, not all of them, there are a lot, but, you know, some of the big ones um, for reharmonizing re a uh, passage, and then I can show the steps that I used to uh, go from creep to the song Fish Are. So the first thing that we have to address is what reharmonization is to begin with. Um, reharmonization is a, an advanced harmony concept, you know, it's right in the word, harmonization, uh, where you basically take a, um, an established chord progression or song or theme uh, and you replace, change, and kind of uh, subvert uh, the chords to come up with a new series of chords that allows the melody to essentially remain the same. Um, again, this is a, a pretty advanced concept, so uh, it's really important that you familiarize yourself with um, basic harmonic concepts like, um, you know, which chords lead to which, the, the subdominant to dominant to tonic concept, um, diatonic chords in a scale, chord shapes, all that kind of thing. You're going to want to have a good understanding of that um, before you throw yourself at reharmonization. So to start, let's take a really quick look at chord structures and how they function in a scale. Uh, now, if we're in C major and we want to build a C major chord, uh, we're going to be stacking um, thirds on top of each other, right? We're going to be stacking uh, the, the root note, the one, um, the first scale degree, the third scale degree, and the fifth scale degree, or in C major, that's C, E, and G. The sixth chord, the minor sixth chord, A minor, is spelled with A, C, and E. Now, between the two, there's really only one difference, and that's the G versus the A. Uh, and I am highlighting, I'm playing a C major chord, followed by an A minor over C, to allow the root note, or the, not the root note, but the lowest note to remain the same, um, to really, really highlight the uh, how closely related these two chords are. Reharmonization basically says, oh, these chords are so similar that the ear accepts them as functioning in the same way in a chord progression. Um, the simplest way to do this is to take basic triads, you know, something like C, F, G, back to C, and extending them to their seventh chord varieties. C major 7, F major 7, G dominant 7, and back to C major 7. As we learn more and more about harmony, we can take and stretch this concept to um, its outer extremes. You know, this uh, idea has been explored a lot in modern music and jazz and that kind of thing. The next method that we can use is a method called substitution. Um, and going back to that difference between the C minor, or sorry, the C major and the A minor chord, 
basically able to fit very closely related chords into the chord structure, or into the chord progression, as a replacement for the original chord. Uh, so something that goes so like C major, F, G, C, can now be A minor, F, G, C, uh, F, G, A minor. Oops. It's different, but it's still, you know, it, it definitely does sound different and has a uh, different f context and flavor to it, but it is similar enough that it functions the same, or about the same. Another method that we can make use of is adding transitionary chords in, like secondary dominance or augmented sixth chords. Um, a secondary dominant essentially says, you know, remember that the, the 5 to 1 motion in a key, in C major that would be G to C, the 5, the tension of the 5 chord uh, really wants to resolve down to a 1 chord. And so, if we treat uh, the destination chord that we want to go to as a temporary one and set it up with its own special five that we call like a five, you know, if it's like a, an F major chord in C major, it would be a five of four, right? That's like uh, the, the five chord of the F chord, but it's only a little bit. It's only that destination. Um, that's called a secondary dominant. So we can take and expand upon a chord progression like this, something that's got a little bit more flavor and a little bit more motion to it. So I'm playing the one chord, then I'm playing a C7, which is the five of the F chord. So we've got a five of four that resolves to the four. Then I'm playing this a flat 7 chord. That kind of seems like it's out of nowhere, right? But that's, we can look at this as, in two ways. We could look at this as a, a special type of substitution that leads to the G, uh, a kind of a, a substitution of the secondary dominance. We're getting really meta now. Um, or we could look at it as what's called an augmented 6 chord, where it's a, basically a flat 6 dominant chord that leads to the 5. Both function perfectly well. Extend that five chord and then back to the one. So again, we've got one, five of four, oops, uh, one, five of four, four, uh, flat two of five, uh, five, five again, and then back to one. At its core, it's still the basic one, four, five, one. just added a, um, some transitionary chords to kind of breathe a new life into that chord progression. And the last method that I'll talk about today is using what's called borrowed chords, uh, where you borrow from a parallel mode, usually the parallel minor mode. Um, and this is something that you've definitely heard before and will be in that um, Creep by Radiohead example. Oftentimes it's done with a minor 4 borrowed from the parallel minor mode, um, and every now and then you'll hear a diminished 2 rather than a minor 2, which is again borrowed from the parallel minor. Uh, mode, but really you can use any parallel mode to borrow a chord. Um, and you know, you'll wind up with, with something that sounds kind of like this. Instead of a 1 4 5 1, you wind up with a 1 minor 4 5 1. A little bit more dramatic, or uh, a 1 2 diminished 5 1. times you'll hear the um, borrowed 2 or the borrowed 4 played directly after the diatonic chord. So you'll hear something like and have that lead back to the 1 or something like this. Kind of got that same identity to it. Um, and, you know, that works just as well. You know the drill, guys. Um, <laughs> went 
got way too long-winded on this one. Jumped from like 9 minutes up to 21 minutes when I put in a single clip. So I'm splitting this one in half. Um, thanks for sticking around for uh, the reharmonization methods. Head over to my Patreon page, um, www.patreon.com slash jgoldbergmusic, uh, and check out the second half where I show you how I turned Creep by Radiohead into a completely different song um, and uh, put a lot of these reharmonization methods into use. I will talk to you next time, and I hope this helped. Thanks a lot. Keep exploring.